Hello, I'm Zon the Daddy Dev. Welcome to the vlog to finish. Let's just jump right the F in. Uh, right off the bat, I do want to do talk about this really quick. Data policy has changed, so be careful how you collect your emails, so forth and so off. Every service that I've had online has changed their private policies to match the EU compliancy, I believe. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but at least Facebook, Google, so forth and so on have. This also relates to Steam Spy. Me and Swenny agreed Steam Spy had to die because it wouldn't be compl compl complicit with EU's regulations. Valve knew what's up. They must have someone in their pocket in the EU or a lot of good data to make predictions. Anyway, I want to jump, uh, give a quick shout out to Wheel Nations who made a whole thing about uh, making a discourse tool app like in Godot. And that's huge because it, we had this whole kind of, uh, some people uh, commented me or contacted me to say, hey, make something on user ex interface slash user experience, UX design. And that those are two different kind of topics that are related, but user experience, if you haven't seen the extra credits, is basically how does a player interact with a game, menus to gameplay, everything. So it, it's, again, how does that experience matter? And if you think about it, Experience is what you're trying to sell. Uh, I can't remember who Tim Ruswick quoted, bad citing, but Ruswick had mentioned in uh, some of his videos before about how you're selling user experience. And this was related to the conference him and a bunch of other people did. Interestingly enough, the developers of Relic Hunter, who I will talk about this in a little bit, were also at that conference, which is really cool. They're the people who did Chroma Squad, but other things as well. And anyway, I'm blathering too much. So what happened here is, as I'm expanding on this design document thing, it's supposed to be one page, and Tim Ruswick uh, mentioned to do this as a one page thing because he had like a hundred page document that didn't go anywhere. I have this idea that, you know, I have part of my design uh, process is drawing because I used to do, try to use to do comics professionally, web comics, it's a mess. Anyway, um, and so I like to design by drawing. And when I started doing this, uh, you know, this is the original file uh, that is gold. It has this gun at an angle, so forth and so on. And this relates to user experience because I am trying to figure out how the controls are going to work. Uh, and moreover, how do the uh, how does the um, game look related to that experience? I'm going to just keep saying user experience a bunch of times. And so yeah, I came up with the uh, using the tank stuff. Uh, check out you know, the other video before, and we had this, but unfortunately the design I did last time was too much of like a run and gun Metroidvania, and I'm not trying to do a run and gun Metroidvania. I am trying to, well, okay, so I noted here, like I did more gun stuff. Uh, oh, that's why I was over here. Let me show you this in bigger, because I'm I'm actually now keeping these things, because for me, I, I do plan to commit to this game, and part of what I'm doing is, is that as I make something, I, st I stick to the next step and then I'm using the design doc document kind of like a, a journal and I hope to edit that journal and have something to show if anyone cares. Uh, I have this interesting idea that I do want to make like one of the first professional looking Godot 3 games and just like the developers of Relic Hunters, there's it's going to be pretty much free. Uh, there's going to, you know, right now I'm considering just launching it for free. Uh, the reason I want to do that is I think free on Steam is a good idea. No one knows me as a developer. Uh, that would show a game that I play. And the other thing that's really cool is not only would that you know be a free game for people to play, is that it would be a great example of Godot 3. So I'm trying to make a polished example of Godot 3. Now again, this is the original, uh, this is kind of what happened. And although this was like a good suit and I was working on this, and it's like a good week of my life, my free time. The problem is, is that, you know, the neck is off. You can't, it's not really going to be a top down shooter at this point. This is just kind of like a flat run and gun. So didn't want that. So I, let's see, maybe the next one loads. No blank meat boy. Really? Oh, come on. What are, are these my pictures or the pictures of conversation? Come on now. So the thing that ended up happening that was really cool is that the, I made these in consideration for a, a top down shooter where I would fake it. And basically the idea would be is that when the player, so this would be the interface right here, up, down, left, right. And then these are like diagonals would only be like ranged weapons that spread that you could hit them. I mean, you could have a diagonal shoot, but this is primarily the grid 
the isometric grid I'm working with. Uh, it's very similar to Death Road to Canada. I'll talk about that later in a little bit. But anyway, the idea is that extreme up, extreme down is the hardest thing to fake. So when the player were to go up, I was having like the gun somehow like point up. But again, it was just too much of a fake perspective. And there's nothing wrong with a fake perspective, but it just gets to be too much. So here also too, like it was working for the control scheme. This is extreme down in this kind of tank person gun system. Uh, melee is okay, but again, it just, it didn't, you know, running the calculations in my head, i.e. my imagination in my head and how this would play, I didn't feel this was, this was the right way. So I started looking at the games that I draw inference from, inference from, influence from, um, again, art through emulation or better yet, you know, develop and improve something like that. I can't remember anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, is that, you know, Death Road to Canada is great. Uh, but the thing about Death Road is that if you can see it, oh, I can't get full screen here. If you see it, the guns don't, they have no hands. That's the trick. And it's really cool is because they do that fake perspective on the body. But the thing about it, and when the characters go up, they just hide the uh, weapons uh, behind, in front, like behind the player or the weapons in front of the player. And that's how you get your orientation. Another cool thing, this is coming on Switch, FYI. Uh, the other, uh, and so it can be one button. So in this game, uh, wherever the player moves up, down, left, or right, the weapon will actually move up, down, left, and right. Now, the thing about this is there comes a problem with, and I, I have to play the game again because I don't know if they did this Resident Evil thing where Resident Evil's controls are so bad. I think it was part three, had it where you had a, a button combination to just do a 180 turn. But as far as I remember, Death Road being a one stick controlled game, one stick to move, one stick to aim, means that you have to, in order to back away from zombies and shoot or swing, you have to actually move forward, stop, face the direction you want to target, and then press the button. And that minute second in this game could be the difference between life or death for the character. And it's a permadeath game if you haven't played it. So it kind of bites when you lose a character that you've been building up just because you can't do a simple uh, walking back and shooting or walking back and swinging motion. Uh, now, given that, I definitely want my game to have that. That's one of the things. So I'll look at the other game that I've, I'm kind of drawing some more um, influence from, which is uh, Welcome to the Gungeon. And for me, Welcome to the Gungeon was again like you can see it here oh man is that like a character what the heck oh oh oh, oh no 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 well you can see it kind of here like um again this perspective is easy to fake this way but the problem with this oh and not the problem sorry and the solution they came up with when the character moves up they only hold one one gun so again this is easy to fake because this is the same as like a left and right game but the up and down is interesting so when the um the hands are not attached to the player. Now that's key to note because as the hands are not attached to the player, that means that wherever you aim the gun, you can kind of do the same thing that Death Road to Canada was doing where, you know, you can just fake it. You can move up, down, left, right. You don't have to do too much. And the way that I'm trying to find it, if there's a, how was a picture before? Oh, I love the dodge roll. I, I do not know if I'm going to do a dodge roll. That might be a lot of work. Uh, okay. I want to find an up. Oh, okay, so if you can kind of see it here, uh, let's see if can I make this bigger? Can I full screen this? No, I can't. Anyway, if you see this kind of here, the the way they do it, the gun being up or down, is that again the hand is just a ball; it's not attached to the figure really, and so they just kind of move the gun up or down. Now the other thing about the guns here is there is some depth. So this one right here, as you can tell, there's a little bit more shading on it, but that doesn't really matter. Most of these guns just look kind of like 2D, but the guns do have diagonal animations. Now, why that is important is, at least understanding that much of the process, I figured out uh, two things that I don't need this body from looking at those games. And I'll talk about how I figured out the head because that actually comes from Relic Hunters. But before I show Relic Hunters, this is how far I got. Uh, with all my studying. And a little bit of this is Relic Hunters and you'll see it later. First, I'm gonna design a generic gun that will have basically all the angles I need to work with uh, to make the other guns. And my gun, unlike Relic Hunters, is just going to be uh, 2D. So this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six animations. And again, how the, how the player churns, that's how I'll turn the gun. 
Now, again, I'm, I'm faking the perspective again on these, but I'm fine because as far as I know, the player will, won't necessarily be aiming at this point for too long. They'll move the weapon enough, so because it's in motion, uh, the player won't necessarily know it. But this is what I got from, from looking at all those games. Now, I'm going to play this official release trailer. So that means since it's officially released, I can play this video on Google, uh, on YouTube, and I shouldn't be in violation of anything. Now I'm going to turn on the sound for this and enjoy. I gave to the uh, the Kickstarter. Oh, and this was also in the um, this was also in the thingy. The they, the developer was in there. Oh. You don't remember, do you? But it is our past. They stole it from us. Let's take it back. Okay, we, <laughs> we don't need to play the whole thing. Uh, I'll put a link, obviously, to everything. No, no, not stop recording. Where's the... Gosh darn, there it is. I have a doubling up sometimes with this OBS. I'm not sure. Anyway, I just want to come back here and play this a little bit. And you can see here, okay, okay, hold on. So as you can see here, uh, again, this is the easy perspective to fake. This is just the handgun. I love that grenade throw. Okay, we have a reload animation, and, a, and there's actually Duck and Cover. I'm going to use Gears and Wharf fan, so this is really cool. As far as I kill, Duck and Cover doesn't work all the way around, but at least here. But again, we're focusing on the guns. Okay, and there we go. See, uh, there's the angles here, uh, again, so forth and so on. So the thing about this is you can see there's an arm, and apparently these guns are 3D. I didn't know that. I don't know if they did 3D render and then just moved it to 2D or if they actually, they're actually they actually real-time 3D. I'm not sure. I think they might be render. And the thing about this is the way that they have their arms set up is they are, they are actually kind of not balls. They are attached arms, but the arms will adjust themselves related to the position of the gun. Now, putting that all into perspective, uh, looking at my game doc... I am again going to only do about one, two, three, four, five, six of these. I even probably will do a reload animation. I'm not sure, but by doing this, again, having this conversation with Ruben, who's convinced me to go 2D, I'm not, I'm not knocking it. Is that you know every weapon I have to do is now going to be one, two, three, four, five, six animations, right? Now a lot of the stuff I can recycle, like the top and the bottom. There's like parts I can recycle, so forth here again, because the way I've kind of kept it simple. Uh, same here, kind of kept it simple. So we'll see where this goes. But that also means that any type of uh, reload animations, duck and cover animations, any of that stuff, I will have to animate the arms and the guns. It's going to be a lot of work. But again, I do want to make something professionally polished. This might take a year to two years. That's why I'm designing and going as I go. And the other thing that came out of looking at the, that game, Relic Hunters, is this whole idea of, uh, you know, you don't need these body parts. You know, we look through the trailer, we look through the art, you don't need these body parts, like this front and this back, which I'm excited. You can just fake it with these, these two torsos, but you at least need a head churn, a simple one frame head churn, and that's what I've signaled here. I don't know about the feet churns. Uh, interestingly enough about how they do their stuff. Bah, bah, bah. Is it going to load? You're going to be a... Yeah, it's not going to load. Can I rewind? No, eh, it's taking forever. Oh, there you go. As you can tell, like the way they animate their legs is really cool uh, in the sense that these look like solid pieces. And what they've done is that they have just minimal frames for solid pieces at high res. So it creates the running effect, the dodging effect, everything like that. It's very simple, but it looks very clean. I might do something like that. However, the other thing that, that they don't do yeah, that I want to do is you know, this game has fixed characters. It takes heavily from, um, what's that game called? Borderlands. And I love Borderlands. I just don't love how Borderlands was handled over time. But Relic Hunters, which I was a backer for the Kickstarter, can't wait for it to be released in September, uh, is like all the best stuff of 
Borderlands, 2D games, shooters, all sorts of stuff. It's going to be great. And again, you know, I'm maybe modeling all this stuff here, but my game that I'm working on is not with Ruben. Ruben's help. Don't know how long he can stay, but I'm glad he's here. Uh, the thing is, is that the game that I'm I'm working on is going to have a lot of different other elements and features, so it's not going to be the same game. Plus, I am a fan of customized characters, so I don't know, like, the legs being customizable, that means I just have to basically animate using this style, like, a bunch of these types of legs and then to load them. If I can't figure a way to create, like, a, a texture variation or program that in, like we did for the Game Jam. Uh, yeah, I got a really cool comic. That's always a seller. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really believe in all of Topaz's, Topaz's um, business practices over the years. Hopefully, they've gotten better. Uh, and that's just another little FYI. But this could also give me a great excuse to get back in comics. The other thing, too, that I started realizing about this is, you know, uh, I uh, thanks to Ruben's help. Again, I, I don't know how long he's going to stay for. Uh, I might have to bring on another programmer. I'm glad this is a hobby for him, that this insane hobby that we're going to try to do is... Uh, one who's kidding two to three year endeavor and we'll try to make a polished professional looking game for fun and for free oh my gosh is that like I just kind of want to focus on art again and animation and those are the, those are the things I'd been studying for like 20 something years that and story and other stuff coding and programming is just something I picked up like five years ago so it's like five years ago to 20 years of experience uh, I'm not saying I can't be like a a master of two or somewhat okay with two, but I'm closer to mastery of art than I am programming. So right now I'm going to be focusing more on that as I kind of go forward. How long have I been going on for? Uh, has this been, oh, great. It's only been 16, it's less than 20 minutes. Fantastic. So I hope you've learned something from episode three of the vlog to finish. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to put this kind of rough, uh, maybe tomorrow. And oh, another note too. I have the when I'm finally figured a name for them, Learning Godot with Ruben. And I'm going to. I've just started editing one of those videos. It's it's just I'm editing everything on on YouTube because it's just easier. And uh, that'll be up probably sometime this week. That's the game plan. Again, I'm trying to do two videos because. Sorry, I'm going to complain a little bit. I have to do 11 weeks of work training. Or related to work, I'm on the 11th week going, the first week going into the second week. It's a pain. Yeah, it's life. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Insert catch a phrase here, and I will see you guys, gals, in the next one. Bye.